This was published by Herzl in a German newspaper. It was Herzl's Zionists, Bolsheviks, supporters who actually declared war on Germany and begun the Second World War. Most people don't realize Judea declared war on Germany as reported by the Daily Express, March 24th, 1934. How many of you were taught that Judea declared war on Germany in the Second World War? And now you understand why. Because that was the catalyst for what? The invention of the state of Israel came on the backs of the Second World War. And it was created by the Bolshevik Zionists under the direction of Herzl because anti-Semitism was the vehicle to create the state of Israel. I'm just reading to you from history, digging deep. Herzl wrote in his diary on page 68, an idea rose on my heart to bring on anti-Semitism and to obliterate Jewish wealth. How do you know people? By their fruit, right? Herzl wasn't a good father. He didn't have a close relationship with his children or anyone, except his mother. His son, Hans, committed suicide. His daughter, Paulina, died from drugs in those years. His daughter, Trudy, went out of her mind. His only grandchild jumped off the Washington Bridge suicide. Nothing is left from Herzl. His daughters were sent to learn by the Christians. Herzl was haughty, filthy, hated himself, and he hated his Jewishness. This was written by American reporter A.J. Powell. So again, I ask you, the Kedoshim, a question. And I ask this to the blind guides Etz Benai Yosef. As believers, should we look to the leadership of Theodore Herzl and David Ben Gurion? David Ben Gurion said this If I could save all the children of Germany by bringing them to England and only half to Israel, I would choose the second. What? David Ben-Gurion was willing to sacrifice millions of children on the altar of Malachian Zionism to found the state of Israel rather than save them from Germany. We must do everything to ensure they, the Palestinian refugees, never do return David Ben-Gurion in his diary, 18th of July, 1948. Let's look back to 70 of the common era and then work forward because I believe we'll find something very interesting because the political and religious establishment that want to enslave you and want you to go back to Israel, the state, prematurely, and be a sacrifice on the Zionist altar. They want you to do that. Meanwhile, they want your gold and your silver. And they're going to say, hey, donate, 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 because this is going to support the temple and the return and the building of the third temple. All of this is based upon a misreading of the book of Ezekiel, which was part one of this series, and a misreading of the book of Zechariah. Just like the children of Joseph in Yasha, chapter 75, they rely upon mammon. They want your money, your gold and your silver. They're not interested in your soul. They want your mammon. 
What we've let, been led to believe that happened in 70 of the common era is called revisionist history. There has been no historical investigation, no historical research done on the forceful expulsion of the Jewish people by the Romans. The Romans never did deport entire populations. Can we understand that? They never did deport entire populations. What did they do? They brought in a prefect and governors to govern the people that they enslaved. They didn't deport people. Yes, they plundered their treasures, the Arch of Titus, but they left the people in the land under their what? Protection or prectorship, their prefects. In fact, 60 years after the destruction of the Second Temple, there was still a major Jewish uprising, wasn't there? It was called the Bar Kokhba Revolt. What does that tell you? That there were still many, many Jews left in the land. They hadn't been deported to Rome. They were there for the Jewish Bar Kokhba Revolt. 60 years after the destruction of the temple. In fact, David Ben-Gurion was a historian. Ever before he was the prime minister of Israel, he was a historian. And this is what he wrote with Yitzhak Ben-Zavi, who was the future president of the state of Israel. Quote, listen to this. To argue... After the conquest of Jerusalem by Titus and the failure of the Bar Kokhba revolt, Jews altogether ceased to cultivate the land of Israel is to demonstrate complete ignorance in the history and the contemporary literature of Israel. The Jewish farmer, like any other farmer, was not easily torn from his soil which had been watered by his sweat and the sweat of his forefathers. Despite the repression and suffering, the rural population remains unchanged. The Fehalin, the farmers, are descendants of the ancient Jews. And here's the paradigm shift. The ancient Jewish peasants converted to Islam for material reasons, to avoid paying what's called the Jahiz tax. The fact that they clung to the soil that they tilled shows that they remained loyal to their homeland. You see, initially, initially, the future prime minister and future president of the state of Israel were what's called integrationist Zionists. They were motivated to bring about an ethnocentric future. They believed the two populations had to be retained and that they could be reunited together. They believed an inhabitant of Hebron was closer in origin to the ancient Hebrews than the majority across the world that called themselves Ashkenazi Jews. It was only the massacre in Hebron and the widespread Arab revolt of 1936 to 1939 that took the wind out of the sails of integration back into the fold of Israel. From this moment on, the descendants of Jewish peasantry vanishes from the Jewish Zionist national consciousness. History is then revised after the Hebron massacre. The Fehelim, those Jewish farmers that never were deported, that their inheritance was the land. They stayed in poverty in the land until finally in the 7th and 8th century, they couldn't afford the jihaz tax that they were going to lose their land. These Jews that were never deported, they couldn't afford the Islamic jihaz tax. So they converted to Islam for the sake of the land so that they could afford to stay and farm the land. The future prime minister and the future president of Israel, they recognized that the inhabitants of the land were the true Jewish descendants that had never left. 
And they tried to bring them into the fold of Israel until the Hebron...